I want to share with you some good news, some good news. And so this morning we'll be talking about faith that moves mountains. All right. And then, uh, but the catch is I also, my uh, subtopic is I choose to believe in miracles. God is a miracle working God. He didn't stop working miracles after the, the, uh, the Old Testament or when Jesus went on to the throne. He's still, praise God. All right. Yay. <laughs> Woo. Okay. I'm all free now. But you know what? He still uh, is um, doing miracles. And so if you choose to believe in miracles, I'm going to give you a few things that, that you're actually choosing to do, whether you knew them or not. And so if you choose to believe in miracles, you choose to stand in faith. Yes. You choose to believe what God said is what he says. Also, if you uh, choose to believe, then you choose to pray without ceasing to push mountains out of your way. So you pray whether you feel like praying or, you know, we don't always feel like doing what we should do, but we do it hot because miracles happen when we do it. It says also to declare the goodness, the power, and the authority of God in every impossibility in your life. If you're choosing to live miraculously, then you are choosing to speak the word of God, whether it looks, whether it's impossible, whether it's totally unheard of, but that's how miracles happen. Also, you choose to declare to things to come, and also you're choosing to usher in the promises of God in every area of your life. God has many promises. He's promised to give us so many things. Then you declare to speak boldly, about his promises over your circumstances. Praise God. Amen. That's how miracles happen. And then it says also, this is the last one. You choose to fast until breakthrough occurs in circumstances in the earth. Amen. Now, you know, I know we, we kind of gotten away from fasting. But sometimes you have to push away things that hinder you, like food for your body, you know, your spouse, you know, those of you married, you know that <laughs> if you fasting, you've got to abstain, <laughs> you know, because you're pushing everything away from the natural so that the supernatural can have an opportunity to come forth. So I'm praying this morning that, you know, you are choosing to live in miraculous. And also, like I said, you know what? We, saw all, we see all the uh, miracles in the, la in the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, we see them happening in, where, with Jesus. And so, but they still happen today. You know what? Because God has not changed. He's the same wonderful, powerful God that he was for the disciples, for the old time saints. He is for us today as the New Testament uh, saints. And so, you know, so I want to give you an example. So I look around the church and, you know, there was a time when the Rise Church, who was Faith Temple, we had numbers, yes. didn't we? Yes. So you look around today, we don't have those same numbers. But you know what I want you to know? If you really know God, you understand that God don't believe in big numbers. I want to take you to uh, my first scripture uh, uh, in, a, mm, excuse me, Judges. Judges, I got it down here. The seventh chapter, the first through the seventh verse. And this is Gideon. So some of you know the story and some of you don't. And that's why we're going to read it because I understand we got all different people. It says in the first verse, then Zerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Har Haran, so that the host of the Midianites were in the north side of them by the hill of Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are uh, that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hands. Now, see, you know, we, we look at crowds. God don't look at crowds. Amen. God's looking at the quality that he has to work with. So Gideon, okay, let's read on. 
It says, and so also God is jealous of his glory. He, he said, there are too many. And then he said, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, my own hand have saved me. Okay? You're not going to take, uh, you're not going to take um, God's glory from him. Now, therefore, go and proclaim the, to the ears of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from the Mount of Gilead. So sometimes, you know, the enemy, the enemy presents themselves as tough. These, and you know what? These people were tough. These were some warring people. All right? And so God said, everybody that's afraid, so God was starting to clear. Everybody that's afraid, he said, tell them to return to their homes. So anyway, it says, they, and there returned the people 22,000. <laughs> okay, he's got 32,000 people up here to fight the battle. 32,000 people at the Rise Church to do the work. <laughs> so God says, wait a minute, it's too many of y'all. I, I, I want all the people that are afraid, all the people that don't believe me, all the people that's talking negative, I want you to just go on home. <laughs> all right? And so out of all those people, so 22,000 people decided to take God up on and they left, right? And there remained 10,000. But listen, and the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them down into the water and I will try them or I will test them for you, I'm going to test them for you. I'm going to show you something. Bring them down there. And it shall be that whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee. And the same shall go with thee of whosoever I say unto thee, this shall not go, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. I might have messed that up a little bit, but basically it's saying, Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you who gonna stay and who gonna go. Basically, okay. <laughs> I'm still I'm still doing some pruning. I'm still getting a, I'm still getting rid of some people. And so you know, sometimes you sit, you look around. You had a crowd of people, and all of a sudden there's not too many people, and everybody starts surmising. Oh, she left because of this. She left because of that. She left because she got fired. <laughs> she left because she wasn't what God was looking for, or he. Amen. Some of them are in some devilment. God can't work in devilment. Amen. They doing stuff. You don't even know they doing it. But God said, I'm going to test some people and see if they can pass the test. Number five. So he brought down the people unto the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as the dog lappeth, he shall, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon, uh, down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth. In other words, okay, so this is kind of unusual. So uh, Minister Tehran was saying he's peculiar. Okay, so God's looking for people that do things in a certain way because God do. So basically, he's, he said, I want to see the people that they've been down over the water and they lap. They bring it. But what, what, what can they do? They can still see, right? They lap. Now, the people down there <laughs> like that, God said, okay, they need to go home. <laughs> They don't know what they're doing. How many times have you been working with people and you find out, they, oh God, this, this is going to be hard because what? They don't know what they're doing. Amen? But God needs some people. And so he said, and the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand and let all the other people Go, every man, unto his place in this home. So God decided that I can get it done. Whereas you might have 32,000, I can get it done with 300 people. Yes. Amen. Right. So whereas we might have had 500 members, 
When God say, I call you to do something, I only need 50 of them. <laughs> the rest of them, they going home. So, you know, we have to, we don't sometimes recognize miracles and recognize how, how God does things. We're so caught up in the natural and what we see. And so we're going to really talk about this morning about how we participate in miracles, not by what you see. Amen. It's not by what you see. So I, I just want to give you another example out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Go to me with Joshua. And that's not really the main focus of my lesson. <laughs> but let's go. So let's go to Joshua, the sixth chapter. And of course, this is about the Jericho wall. Amen. The people were there. They were ready. They had armor on. I may not read all of this. But, you know, um, this is Joshua. And they went to the Jericho wall. And God told them, it's going to fall. Now, they might have been scheming and having leadership meetings and <laughs> drawing out plans, you know. Uh, and, and they had uh, the leaders, had the, uh, the people under them, and, and they had to meet and see what their plans were. But God says, the walls are going to fall down. And they're going to fall down according to how they, I say they're going to fall down. Basically, you're just going to march around that wall, and you're going to make some noise, and the wall's going to fall down. Are you ready for a miracle? Oh, yes. <laughs> Amen. Are you ready for how God does miracles? Praise God. He said, I just want y'all to just make some noise. <laughs> Sing some songs. <laughs> Do some dancing. <laughs> and the walls are going to fall down. But you know what, church, if we at the Rise Church, if we are expecting God to carry out his ministry with us, we got to understand that we got to meet a certain criteria. Yes. Yes. It's not in the numbers. Yes. It's in what you believe and what you hear. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, let's move on. You know, <clears throat> I want to actually, my lesson is going to um, come from Luke 127 through 38. I'm actually going to talk about this. It's Christmas time, right? Yeah. It's the season for miracles. It's the season where we celebrate the greatest miracle of all. And I just want you to look at miracles in a different way. Because sometimes, you know, we're like, we're believing God for miracles. And we're asking God to do these things. But um, how do we participate in miracles? Do you believe that we can do anything to facilitate a miracle? Do you? You guys are thinking, do you? Yes? I say yes. And I think there's two things that we need to do, and we're going to talk about this. We need to listen and obey. Amen? I already told you up there, if you choose miracles, there's some things you need to do. You need to pray without ceasing. You need to speak the word of God. You need to believe what God is saying to you. Amen. And you need to be bold enough to come to the board of directors to come and say, this is what the thus saith the Lord. Because God don't only speak to the board of directors. God speak to the people in the pew that believe his word. And that are bold enough to proclaim it. Amen? Amen? That's how miracles happen. So when we're looking for just a select few to do everything, we're not going to have miracles. Amen? We got to have people that believe in the promises of God. Amen? So I want to just, I want to, I want to make this plain to you. Uh, Matthew, um, I'm just going to refer to it. Matthew 13 and 16 says, Having eyes to see and ears to hear. That's what we need to pray. God, give me eyes to see. Give me ears to, he to hear what you're doing in this season. What, you, what are you saying in this season? God, help me to hear it. Lord, help me to see beyond what I see. Amen. To look beyond. Open up my supernatural eyes and my supernatural ears, ears so that I can hear. So in the in scripture... We're going to talk about, uh, let you see some people, you already kind of saw Joshua and Gideon participating in a miracle. 
doing, you know, what God says. And, you know, and we're here participating because sometimes, you know, for a pastor myself, sometimes it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But we still have to get out the bed. You know, last year at this time, I was speaking, you know, uh, and it's, if something, it seems like the enemy comes after me when pastor's gone. He must, he's my covering or something. He comes after me hard and strong. So last year I was speaking and just when pastor left, I got a pinched nerve and I couldn't even, excuse me for saying this, man, I couldn't even put my drawers on. <laughs> You know, Pastor was getting ready. I was struggling. He's like, girl, come here. Let me, <laughs> Let me help you get that. And, you know, and I had, I had an appointment, which I had had for several months to speak at this church's program. And one of the things that we were taught uh, in Fig with them is when people have prayed about their program, they've set their program up, and it's set around you, you need to show up. Right. You need to show up. So here, you know, I had, you know, here I could barely move. And, uh, and I was determined to keep my appointment. I was, and then my, my, my topic was, let your light shine. <laughs> Amen. And so, you know, so I had to do, God gave me the strength to do it, but I had to do some things. And so, you know, I had, uh, um, uh, Rosetta was down, so she drew me a bath, and I have a, a jacuzzi tub, so, you know, she drew me a bath that morning, I sat in the tub, and, and, and Maricela, who's had several back surgeries, she gave me this little machine that you lay on the floor, and you put your feet on it, and it just moves your, so I did that a couple of times, you know, and then I prayed that I'd just be able to get my clothes on, but you know, I made my appointment. Yeah. I participated. I, I was asking God to do something, but I had to do something too. First, I had to study. So I had my lesson done, even though I had to stand and get my lesson out. But you know what? If, we, if we're expecting God to do something for us, we got to participate in believing God. We've got to move out on faith. So I got there and I did my, but I told the lady, okay, I can't do no altar things, the altar stuff. Y'all got to do that. If somebody jump up and hit me, I may not be able to get up. Amen. <laughs> and so they was like, whatever you want. But you know what? I delivered my message and I did what I was called to do, what I was asked to do, you know. And so, you know, this, I'm here today. Yes. Miracle territory. Amen. You know what? Because I'm determined to do what God called me to do. I have to sit down there and fan a little bit. So I, I can't get too hot and get up there. But you know what? You have to participate. When, and you have to listen to what God is saying to you. If he says, sit down, I sat down. So that I could be able to do what I am supposed to do. Amen. So we have to do that. Let's go to uh, Luke. So church, pray that God would give you what it is you're supposed to do to help bring forth the miracle in your life and your families. So today we're going to look at Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the Mary that participated in the greatest miracle that we have ever had. It's Christmas time. I want you to look at this in a little different way. Are you there in Luke, the first chapter? Yes. Okay. I love Christmas. I love the story of Christmas. Amen. And uh, so I'm privileged to be able to use it in my message today. And so we're starting at the 27th verse. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now Mary was about 13 years old. In that culture, that's what time they got engaged and got married. Can you imagine? You got a 13-year-old. Amen? <laughs> no, you said no. But, but Mary, and so the 28 verses, and she and the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, Would not you be? Yes. Amen? And cast her mind Cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. 
And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his throne there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing as I have never been with a man? How can, so we know we're in miracle territory, right? How can this be? I'm 13 years old. Here's an angel coming before me. And first of all, the angel might get you, right? <laughs> you know, uh, a funny story. I, um, I woke up one night. And when I woke up, I, had a, I either had a vision or really he was standing there. And it was a spirit. And when I saw it, church, I was, I was in the bed, but I was running backwards. <laughs> I mean, I was moving. But you know what? God spoke to my husband and said, there's a, she's going to have a spiritual visitation. And so when I started running backwards, to me, that's what I was doing. But I was kicking and getting back from this spirit. And my husband wrapped his arms around me, and he, and he calmed me down. And when he, he calmed me down, then he told me that the Lord had said I would have that visitation. And he was there to girt me because I was scared. <laughs> I was more than scared. <laughs> Amen. Uh, he didn't have time to say, be not be afraid. I was already afraid. And I was already half gone in my mind. Amen. But she uh, had this visitation. And then he said unto her, and he said, and the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived the son in her old age, and this is, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. Another miracle, right? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Nothing. She had not been in a situation to where she could conceive a child, but God says the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and bring this thing about. How many times that God said something to you for you to do, and you are looking into your own self? But God says, I have, you're going to do this, but the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. Amen. And you're going to be able to bring this to pass. Why? Because the Spirit of God yes. is going to be upon you. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. With God, there's nothing impossible. 38 verse, and Mary said, I love Mary for saying this. Behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Did she participate? What did she answer? Okay. Whew. Whatever is about to happen, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> And you know, sometimes you're overwhelmed by the Spirit of God and by the plans and the purposes of God. You're overwhelmed, you know, but, but she said, and I would say, Whew, okay, well, hallelujah. Go on, God, have your way. Have your way. This is how we participate. This is how Mary participated. One of the things I want you to understand, you know, from this encounter, that miracles are an extension of God's love. God causes miracles to happen because he loves us. He causes miracles to happen in our lives for things that we cannot do upon our own because what? He loves us. His love for us is past understanding. And so if you need a miracle, he'll give you a miracle. You just have to participate. Am I getting that across to you? Amen. You just have to participate. And so in this uh, 
This season, this is the greatest miracle that had ever happened. What if this miracle didn't happen? What if Mary said, I'm too scared to do this? Amen? But she did. She, she, what did she do? She gave up her body. She gave up her life for God's plans and purposes to come about. And I want you to understand, sometimes, you know, we're just, we're just looking for miracles for our own selfish whatever we want, you know. But God has a plan and a purpose for his miracles. And we need to understand that. The reason a miracle is coming, not only because God loves us, because it's his purpose. He's trying to get his will done in the earth realm. And he's using you for you to participate with him. You know, we're taught that we work with the Lord. We don't work for the Lord. But we work with the Lord to accomplish what? His plans and his purposes. And to bring about his promises in the earth realm. That may be in your family. That may be in your body. That may be in your church. That's in the world, your community. But God, it's, the miracles have to do with God's plans. Amen? It has to do with his plans. And so we have to, I want just for you to expand. And so. We're saying, God, I need a miracle. But you know what? God is saying, yes, I need one. And I, and I want it to come to pass. But I want it to come to pass like this. <laughs> Amen? Not like what you, how you want it. So sometimes, you know, our natural eyes get in the way of what God is trying to do. In this story, I didn't read that part, but think about the shepherds. Uh, it doesn't, you know, sometimes, like I said, miracles don't always materialize and come the way we think they are. Think about the shepherds and the wise men in this miracle. They came, now the wise men, every time I've seen them, those dudes are sharp. <laughs> I mean, their garb is, you know, it's it's just, they're jewel, they, they, they're, I, I can't even describe it. <laughs> you know, they're rich, all right? And they brought rich gifts. But check this out. When they came, and they came to see a king, and they saw a baby in a manger. They saw this little baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, laying in a trough. <laughs> That's what a manger is. But you know what? Because they could see beyond their natural eyes, they still saw a king. And they worshiped a king. They didn't worry about the surroundings. The, the, you know, we sing the songs, the cattle are mooing, the poor baby to sleep, you know. Uh, they didn't, it smelled around there too. <laughs> Amen. They didn't worry about the smells. They saw this baby, they understood what the signs and the messages they got, and they worshiped him as a king because they didn't look at the surroundings. The shepherds came and bowed down, and they worshiped Jesus as a king. Yes. Yes. What? Because they, they didn't look at the surroundings. Now, there were other people that did. Here, Mary and Joseph can't even be, get in a hotel so you have to understand that miracles don't come wrapped the way that you think they are. You've got to be able to see what God is doing in the earth realm. So they worshiped him. They, under, they saw and they followed what they had been told. They followed the messages they heard. They didn't worry about what their eyes saw or what their nose smelled. Miracles. This is how we participate with miracles. And they will come to pass. Now, the next thing I want you to look at, the angels. What did the angels say? Don't be afraid. Now, I already told you, I've had a moment to be afraid. I've had a moment to say, God, please don't tell me nothing else. I'm just, I'm just you know, just leave me alone. Um, but you don't, you do grow out of that, right? And you know that God helps you too, right? <laughs> He'll have you to the place where you'll be saying, God, I'll do whatever you said to do. <laughs> Amen. But he said, uh, but the angel came to her and 
At first she was afraid, but I love her faith. And not only her faith, her relationship with God. Because she received the message that it was from God. And because I think that she was raised and she knew who she was taught who God was and knew who God was then she obeyed and submitted you know to the will of God but I want to uh, just bring your to our natural minds sometimes when um, God is talking to us and so we have some of these questions did I really see the angel all <laughs> right is God really speaking to me right what if I'm wrong? What if the miracle doesn't happen? I stood up in church and I prophesied that God was going to do this. And God loved us. And, but what if it don't happen? Then <laughs> once we get to that question, we're like, okay, I don't think I better do that. What if it doesn't happen? And then what we're really saying is, will God really keep his word? For a miracle to happen, are you willing to be wrong? Are you willing to say, okay, I missed it on that one. But I'm not going to close myself off to he hearing from God. And hearing the next assignment that I have. He knows uh, the plans, you know, that he has for us. And God always is looking uh, to uh, confirm his word. I want to just share a situation, a uh, personal situation in my life. And, um, and this has to do with uh, my son's passing and my husband's um, situation. But about seven years, just about seven years before that happened, I had a dream. And in my dream... I was in the past, the present, and the future. In the past was dealing with me. And I knew it was the past because I, in the scene from the past, I could see um, I was in the little house, the little plantation house. And, you know, back in the day, we had plastic curtains. <laughs> Y'all probably don't know about that. We, we had, and then we hadn't had no window screen, screens. So in my, in my dream, the, the, uh, the wind was blowing and the curtain was you know being drawn out the window and it was flapping it was making noises so I could see that and then fast forward to the second scene I was in my family room downstairs we lived on point sir and and my son and my husband was there and then I turned and looked out the sliding glass door and there was a man eater there was real danger but when I looked at the sliding glass door there was no door so here's my husband and my son, and out here is danger, but there's no protection. There's no sliding door. You know, so I wake up and I think, oh my God, what was that? And then all of a sudden it comes to me, go check the sliding door. So I went down and I checked the sliding door and the, I pulled it and it just came open. I mean, it was like I was in the twilight zone. <laughs> do, 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 do. I was like... <laughs> I was like, oh my God. So I thought, maybe I'm wrong. I push it and I try to lock it, but the lock is broken. So I tell my husband, the door is, the lock is broken. And he says in his, you know, really positive way, oh, I was supposed to fix that five days ago. <laughs> so what I thought about the dream was that's what the dream was about. Yeah. That, I, that we were in danger and, and I needed to do something so that he would be reminded to fix the door. So he fixed the door. And the other thing was that, um, you know, we were having break-ins because we lived in, in a neighborhood with military people. So people, that people were breaking in, stealing guns. We didn't have no gun, but we still didn't need nobody to break into our house, right? So fast forward. Um... So I'm sleeping one night and I hear a spirit that says, I'm dying. So I interpreted that as something else. And I didn't say anything. And a few weeks later, my son passed away. And, oh gosh. You know, when you miss it, it's hard. It's hard. People were 
saying things, but, but we really didn't know what was happening. And fast forward. So, you know, we're all in the house there and we're all grieving. We're all, it's really, really bad. And so I'm laying on the bed and I hear the spirit again. I'm dying. Whew, I said, listen, <laughs> there will be no more dying here. You will not die. You will live. I command you to live in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and then I add a little flesh in there. I cannot afford another death. And I started talking to the Lord. Fast forward. Right after Jubilee, I was so tired that morning. I was waiting for everybody to be gone. I could sit down. And everybody was going out the door. And I got like right here. Pastor comes through the hallway and he says, he says, Joe, I need to go to the chiropractor. <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> you need to go to the chiropractor. So I was like, okay, let's get, let's get to going. We get in the car and then Pastor is really struggling uh, to breathe. And this is my husband, not your pastor. Because when I say certain things, everybody like, oh, the pastor. No, this is my husband, right? <laughs> I'm talking about my husband. And so what I know about my husband is when he having in his mind to do something, trying to get in there doesn't work. So I was like, okay. So we get a little further down in the car, and he's really struggling uh, to breathe. And he said, Joe, take me to emergency. So here's my door. And so I said, sweetheart, if I take you to emergency, you got to go through intake. But if you go in the ambulance, they're going to take you straight to the back, you know, and you're going to get immediate attention. So it has to be his idea, right? So he says, okay, uh, call the ambulance. So, you know, I pull over uh, at this time. I'm not in any address. I pull over. And church, immediately I know exactly where I'm at. I know I'm in the dream. I know that this is the second person that was standing. And so I know that when I had that vision or scene of Pastor and Garrett in the present, I know that that disease had started then. And so I realized that Death is on my husband. The widow maker is present. And so I had to understand what I needed to do. So what I did, I pulled over to the side. I called the ambulance. And, you know, they had to ask me different things. So, you know, so I'm telling them, this is happening to him. This is happening. This is, they're asking me questions. And I'm giving them the information that they need. And then after that, I had to also direct them to where I'm at because I'm just on the side of the road. So I'd give them all that information. And then pastor says to me, Joe, you're really calm. And, you know, but I was because I had that calmness from God and I knew where I was. I knew that God had the situation under control. And I knew that my job was to get the help to my husband. That was my job. That was my participation in the situation. And you know what? When I saw, when I heard the ambulance coming, I jumped out the car and I was waving so they could see me and they came. And you know what? In me, they didn't have to ask no questions. They put pastor on that gurney and they threw that, uh, uh, what is it? The, what is the, no, not the, they just threw the patch on it. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the medicine. I knew it in my, you know, you, you understand. And, 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 and immediately, they didn't have to ask no questions. They knew exactly what was going on. They put that patch on him, and air came to him. You know what, we went to the hospital, and I followed them to the hospital, and I had to go and pay a bill. We had, we had a bill, and I know people will say, but I had all my family at the house. We had gas and electric bill. I couldn't ask anybody because my bill was $900, okay? 
So people are like, why didn't you ask somebody? Uh, yeah, I'd be like, is she crazy? $900. <laughs> so I went and paid the bill. I came back and the doctor met me and pastor had an episode. And so he said, Miss Crane, this happened. And so I said, did you take care of it? <laughs> and he said, no. He said, but I think it tells us what happened. And so he showed me an x-ray. It was really dark. He couldn't see it. And so he said, listen, uh, this is what I want you to do. Kaiser wants him. They're going to come and get him. They send an ambulance. And they said, and he said, um, whatever you do, don't let them send him home. And uh, so my, my reinforcement, Barbara, met me at the hospital. We had to go around with that doctor because he wanted to send my husband home. And we had to go, and I don't even know how Scripps got the information, but Scripps called Palomar and said, you guys knock it off and get him down here right now. When they got down there, they had the equipment to see what was going on with Pastor's heart. He had two arteries. They would close like that, just like that, you know. And so they were, by the time, so I got him down there. And by the time I came back home, by the time I got back down there, he was in surgery. They showed me, and they put, showed me the stents that they had put in him. But you know what? See, God's going to do a miracle. But you can't fall out and go crazy. Right. When God has said, I'm with you and I will never leave you, you have to keep some around, around you so that you know what God needs you to do in the situation. Church death was, was after my family at that time. Because right after him, I, the, I got another message and the Lord said, your grandchildren are dead. You know what? I went and sat on the bathroom stool, and I had a good long talk with the Lord. <laughs> like, no, Lord, no. You know, sometimes you, you can't quote every scripture and yeah. say everything. <laughs> I just said, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> this can't happen because I can't do it, you know. And I was like, Lord, we can't take any more. We can't do any more because uh, I had lost my son, my husband. And th my husband, I didn't lose him, just that situation. And, and then uh, my mother-in-law and then my mom had, they had uh, Alzheimer's. And <laughs> so I was like, that's it. That's it. That's all Josephine can do. Everything else, God, is yours. You know, and so God moved in that situation. But when I look back on it, I realize, you know, the miracle happened because the enemy was really trying to take us out. But he didn't. And that's the miracle for my family. Amen. We are here to tell about it. Praise God. We are here. I want to move right along. Um, <clears throat> the next thing in this uh, this particular scripture with Mary, the Lord will confirm his word. Now, you know, when God is telling you to do something and, and you're, uh, you know, you're wondering in yourself and, and processing, God will confirm his word. He will not leave you out there on the limb because he understands that we have finite minds, you know, and he understands that we're natural, but he's bringing something supernatural in through us that he's going to use us in his plan. So he is, and he will confirm his word. Now, the angel told Mary about Elizabeth, her cousin. And so he, he told her what was happening. She was barren, but she conceived, and she was already six months in her pregnancy. And see, you can see the goodness of God that um, not only um, did he answer Elizabeth's and Zachariah's prayer, but he also made a safe place for Mary to go. Because those people are going to stone Mary. <laughs> Mary go out there talking about uh, the Holy Ghost came upon me <laughs> and I'm pregnant. <laughs> uh, they were like, meet us down the corner. Because <laughs> that's where the stone is, is going to happen. <laughs> because, you know, they're not going to believe her. Amen. So God made a place, a safe place for her to go. He had already moved on Elizabeth who had been barren. 
and gave her a child, sent her an angel, so that when he sent Mary to Elizabeth, praise God, you know where I'm going? Yeah. Elizabeth could understand yes. because God had moved on her. She's now pregnant, and, and, <laughs> and he moved on Zechariah too. <laughs> he shut his mouth. <laughs> He, he shut, he shut Zechariah, because God's like, I'm working in here. Since you're not going to work with me, you're not going to work against me. So he shut her husband. Her husband was a, 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 a priest. He was a priest. He served in the temple. He was the pastor. He was in the church. God said, if you're not going to work with my plan, you shut up. And you're not going to speak until the baby gets here. How many times, you know, if you are, <laughs> you are going through a situation and you have people that are saying crazy stuff? You know, I admire our assistant pastor's wife when she was going through the journey with cancer. She said, I stay away from people. I stay away from people because people are not always responsible for what they say. And, I, and, and I'm going to say this for her. And then I'm trying to believe God for my healing, but I'm ready to fight somebody. I'm ready to step aside from my, and cuss them out, you know, just like, look, I'm fighting for my life. Would you just shut up? Because they don't always know what to say. And so God was doing uh, this. And so he shut Zachariah's mouth because Zachariah didn't believe him. He didn't, he didn't believe nothing going on. So God said, you're not going to speak against my plan. I'm not, you're her husband. You need to take care of that baby. I'm not going to get rid of you, but I'm sure going to shut you up. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that in itself. God's got a sense of humor, right? <laughs> he said, I, I, you know, I don't, have to, I don't have to deal with this. But I like it, you know, that um, God sent her to Elizabeth. Because, ladies, you know, we need to talk about stuff. I know, I'm sure she needed to process, right? God is good. He's good. So he sent her to Elizabeth and Zechariah down there. And, um, and Elizabeth had the opportunity to say, cousin, let me tell you what's happening to me. You know, and then Elizabeth could identify and say, look, I'm right with you. Because here I am, as old as I am, and now I'm six months pregnant. Amen? They had, they understood. And God understood. He understands your needs. When you're standing with him and when you decide to obey him, he knows what you need. And he will stand by you to confirm you and to help you. Because what? After all, it's his plan that he's trying to get to us. And I'm so grateful to Mary and to Elizabeth because they, their children blessed the world, amen, blessed our lives, changed the world. Jesus coming is the greatest miracle that ever happened. And Mary participated. Amen. That's my message this morning. Mary participated in the plan of God. And that's why I'm here to tell you this morning, man, we can see miracles. We can see miracles. We just need people to listen to what God is saying and then have the boldness and the faith to come back and repeat it to whoever needs to hear it. We need people that will stand and proclaim the word of God, even though it hasn't happened yet. Amen. But you speak it forth in a prophetic word and you release that word out there and you give God the opportunity to send the angels and to send whoever he to bring it to pass. We need that. I need that. We need that to keep the ministry of Jesus Christ alive. We need people moving in the spirit all the time. We need you praying without ceasing. We need you speaking the word of God. We need you to be bold enough. Some people are going to talk about you. They are going to say, you're crazy. <laughs> They're going to say, have you heard what she's saying now? <laughs> Man, crazy just always on her. 
But we have to be bold enough to believe God. And then we are choosing to see the miracles of God happen. We are choosing to see our lives fulfilled and the purpose of God carried forth in our lives. Amen. It's not just about. So I'm just asking you today, are you willing to believe? Are you willing to believe? Praise God. Are you willing to let a miracle come through you? And we can see, uh, we, I mean, you know, we are celebrating the miracle that Mary birthed. So we're still birthing. Amen. We are still birthing. We're still birthing prophets, evangelists, uh, we're pastors. We're still birthing these out for God's plans and purpose to be carried forward. You know, I birthed five children and whatever. And, and, and I've seen the enemy try, try, try and take them. I've seen him come against us when we were distracted and take one, you know. Uh, and I've seen him try to take the others. You know, when Garrett passed away, we had all kind of things happen with divorces. Just, I was like, Lord, what in the world? But we had to keep on keeping on. We had to believe that God would give us the strength. You know what? And he did. And I'm not going to tell you that it was easy. It took me a long time. It took me a time to forgive myself. Like, how could I miss it? You know, if I didn't, would my kid be here? I mean, just all kind of things, you know, to, to come against me, to come against my mind, to come against my health even. But still... One thing is for sure, we're called to do this ministry. And God didn't say it would be easy. But he said it would be done. And we have our part to play. Amen. So God, I want you to understand that God is still speaking today. And miracles are happening everywhere. And we need miracles to happen for us. But we need people willing to participate and have the faith to participate and the relationship with God so that when he speaks to you, you don't think he's the devil. <laughs> you know that he's your heavenly father. And you know that whatever he asks of you, that um, he's going to give you the power, the authority, the anointing, whatever it is, for it to get done. Don't expect it to get done in the way that you think it should get done. In the confines of where you think it should get done. Or who you think it, you know. You thought God was going to do it with this one. And he was like, I don't want that one. I want this one. The one that you're not getting along with. <laughs> All right. Amen. Because there's going to be a lesson up in there for you too. <laughs> Praise God. He's going to save that one and he's going to save you too. The Lord is good. And I just thank him this morning. Let's just give God a hand. Praise. God is good. I want to pray for you this morning. And what I want to pray for, the Holy Spirit put this on my heart. I want to pray for forgiveness. And, you know, um, so I counsel people uh, on how to forgive. And uh, so the Lord just reminded me. He said, you do that in private, but you've never done that over the pulpit. Uh, teach people how to forgive. And uh, so one of the things, and, we, uh, and, and I actually learned this. At one point, we had a divorce recovery class. And so, you know, when divorce happened, there's a lot of pain, hurt, anger, uh, and it's hard to move forward. So when you forgive, you cancel the debt that's owed you. A good example is, you know, if you owe Macy's and, you know, you charged up and you charged up. And Macy's decided to cancel your debt. The charges are really there, right? So you cannot cancel a debt owed you without charging them. And so this is what we taught in the, in the class there. 
You have to charge them. If you're going to forgive a spouse, you're going to forgive a friend for betraying you, you got to charge them. What did they do to you? See, most people don't like to do this because they don't like to revisit the pain. But you cannot, you cannot ever cancel the debt unless there's a bill. So you have to bill them. What did they do to you? How did they hurt you? What, what did they take from you? You have to, just write, you, have to, you have to spell it out. Because unless you do this, people say, how, how can I forget? Unless you bill it out and understand and feel the pain that they caused you, you can never stamp cancel, forgiven. Amen? So today, I want to pray for you. What I'm going to pray for, because you don't want to have to do the forgiving. I'm going to pray that God will strengthen you, that his love will surround you enough to where you can feel the pain of what happened to you and then let it go. Forgive him. Let it go. Let this be the end of the pain in your life. Let this be the last time somebody, because sometimes, you know, when, when you have a sore, I have a sore arm, and somebody brush up against it, what happens? To get the pain. So I want to remove that sore so it can never be triggered again. Amen? Nobody can ever, because sometimes they're not, the person that does something is not the one that hurts you, but they remind you that you were hurt and then you start to bleed all over again but if you can let go and let that sore heal you'll be okay and you'll be free you'll be free of that person it's like in the divorce when you say the divorce is done you got to move on you are free of that spouse and whatever they did to you the friendship is over you got to move on. You are free of whatever the betrayal was that happened to you. You're on your job. Someone did something. They caused you a promotion. They got it. But they lied. Right? You got to move on because God's got something better for you. Amen. So I want you this morning as I pray, I want you, I want you to be able to be free. I want God to be able to use you in his next miracle because you are free and you're healed. All right? I want you to stand with me and I want to pray. Did everybody understand what I said? You understand about how you cancel a debt? How you get rid of that hurt and pain? You understand that? Okay, praise God. Then we're ready to pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that you strengthen us with might, with power. God, that we are able to do whatever it takes to live in your promises, your purpose, and your plans for our lives. Today we come just with the idea of forgiving. We want to forgive and to let go of whatever's been hindering our walk with you and whatever's been keeping us held captive. We want to be free. So this morning, what I ask for the people of God is that they are strengthened in their inner person. God, that they are reassured of your love for them and that they are able because of that to step out and to let go of these people. As Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. No, they don't know everything that they've done in our lives. No, they don't know how the sleepless nights and, and the pain and how we cried. And they don't know all of that. But you do, Lord. And so today, we are going to serve that bill. And we're not going to give it to them. We're not going to blast them with it. We're just going to say, debt canceled. They owed it to us, Lord. They owed it because they did it. But what we're going to do is cancel what they owed us and say, I forgive. And I'm moving on with my life. And 
and I'm looking for greener pastors. I'm going to higher heights, deeper depths to walk with my Lord and my Savior, unhindered by anybody else. In Jesus' name, we pray and we receive. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Okay, you may be seated for the next go around. And thank you for your patience. Welcome to the Rise Church YouTube page here in sunny Southern California. Thank you for taking the opportunity to just listen to our services and to our sermons. Follow us here on YouTube. Enjoy the sermons here at, that we're going to put up every week. We look forward to hearing from you. Don't forget to come and visit us also. 1943 California Street, Oceanside, California. The Rise Church of Oceanside where we renew, ignite, serve, and empower. We look forward to hearing from you. We'll see you real soon. God bless.